Okay, one, one second, could you just introduce yourself and then in the microphone? I'm Xiaohui Liu from the School of uh, Econo Business and Economics, Loughborough University. So I just need a quick uh, clarity about the uh, funding call. Um, I have noticed that the research on some low-income countries in Africa have been uh, funded previously, such as Ghana or Nigeria. Or, so do we, uh, should we avoid uh, the countries having researched that's the first question. The second question is that uh, it seems the funding call really um, encourage uh, partnership with uh, African uh, researchers or Chinese researchers. So if the project uh, is led by, say, African researcher or Chinese researcher, will, will increase the chance of success. And, and this, the third one is about cross-cutting themes. It seems it got, uh, have three uh, themes there, like uh, fragile governance and uh, gender issues and uh, uh, climate change. Do we need to address all these three issues or just one, one of them? Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, and one here. Hi. Um, yep, Ali Chish Mazangi from University of Nottingham in uh, China campus. Got three questions, very quick ones. Uh, do you fund the postdocs? And just any, if, if there's any, you know, explanation on postdoc funding, if it is possible, and um, is it essential to have a UK uh, co-ed, or can we just have research partners from the UK side as the advisory board, or, or something that get, get that give us advice, just mainly because the UK partners are quite costly, to be honest. <laughs> and the third question is that is it essential to have research partners from the governmental side in, in China? Okay. Okay. Thank you. Gentlemen here. Uh, Ian Lane, uh, freelance consultant. A um, couple of quick questions. If we miss this call, is there likely to be another one? <laughs> and uh, secondly, uh, would it be possible to have a research partner, for instance, in New Zealand uh, to contribute to the study? Okay. Uh, yes, Gordon Crawford, University of Leeds. Um, this is the the money, as I understand, is coming from growth research pot. Uh, a lot of emphasis on, on economic development, mm -hmm. but China, Africa relations, interaction also entails social issues. Um, I mentioned migration before in a sort of a, a, a previous question. So I'm really wanting to know whether there is a, a very strong focus on economic growth and development or whether there is a sort of somewhat wider uh, perspectives will, will, will also be taken into consideration for, for funding. So in other words, uh, you know, China's impact on social development and, and, and social issues more generally in Africa. And one other very quick question, not all African countries are low income countries. Mm -hmm. Ghana, for example, has uh, recently become a lower middle income country. Is uh, middle lower middle income countries eligible for this? All right, thank you very much. Uh, then final there, and the question <coughs> is. Andrew Ross from Global Garden. Is there a prospect of bringing in other research organizations such as the Technology Strategy Board, in particular looking at the development of smart cities and the kind of financing which that calls for, which is innovative bond financing, looking at how infrastructure finance is applied. I'd be interested in that project, but I've by no means got the capacity to do it. All right, um, so I think that's, um, um, that's it. Um, so there are questions about which partners uh, to, to engage in research, which, which countries, with core areas. Mm -hmm. um, okay. you, like, you like to go first? Sure. Is that right? Yeah, of course. Yeah. And it will be okay, future polls. Uh, well. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so there's one about whether we should avoid countries that have already been researched. Well, I think there's going to be peer review of the proposal. So if you make a proposal about uh, a question which is already be answered in the same way, then it's not going to it's not going to get chosen. But if you've got an original perspective uh, or a different question in a country which is where, where something else has already been researched, then you know that's by no means disqualified. Um, 
And then the uh, next one was... Um, do we need to, to, to touch on all the cross-cutting issues? Well, no, and in fact, I don't think it's true that we need to touch on any of the cross-cutting issues in a proposal, but across the across the uh, piece, we will be looking for some proposals that, 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 that touch on the cross-cutting issues. So it increases your chances somewhat if you, uh, if you uh, touch on these cross-cutting issues, because some, some, of, some funding will, uh, will have to go to, to, to proposals that touch those. But if you've got a brilliant proposal that doesn't touch any of the cross-cutting issues, I think that's still uh, mm. completely eligible, and we, yeah. are, we expect to uh, uh, fund some of those. Um, so I'm hesitating because I can't read my writing, but uh, <laughs> there's a sort of cluster of questions about whether you needed a UK partner, whether you needed a Chinese partner or a low-income country partner, whether New Zealand was eligible, and in fact, uh, uh, there's, there's no restrictions on who's in and who's out in terms of the, the location of the, the research. Chinese and African expertise were very interested in having, but that doesn't mean Chinese and Africa researchers necessarily it can or cannot mean a uh, combination of those and any researchers from anywhere else. Um, so is it economic development or social issues? Well, I mean, I think that there is scope for including things which are about migration, but it basically, yes, it is rather economic. Uh, uh, it's about economic growth, economic development, <coughs> China and Africa uh, issues to do with that. So going well beyond that, I think, is beyond the remit. But it's fairly clear. If you read the core specification, I think that's fairly clear. Um, Lower middle income countries, well, I mean, uh, you don't have to rule them out of the equation, but I think if you a, a proposal which was very specific to uh, uh, an issue which is to do with lower middle income, country, middle income countries, so for something that was very specifically about China and South Africa, for example, is probably not going to get chosen because low income countries, in the transition from lower to middle in income, uh, are the, are the area of interest. Um, well, I wrote down the question about smart cities and type of finance. I mean, it's got to be a question that's something to do with China as well as Africa. That's, that's a requirement. But um, I'm not sure if I know enough about that question to say any more about it. But hmm. uh, Okay. Yeah. Um, should I yep. just continue? So um, let me start. Maybe, maybe just um, on the cross-cutting themes. Uh, once more, the way we phrased it in the call specification is you need to have considered whether it is relevant or uh, these cross-cutting issues themes are relevant. So um, consider it and if, if it has bears no relevance to your proposal then don't, don't include it. Um, and there was a question on whether African-led partnerships would um, be more successful or would be considered, would that be considered a better um, proposal? And I think, well, the primary criterion, again, is research quality and um, the quality of the question. And um, I think the, the type of partnership you, you have in your proposal really has to be dictated by your research question. So if um, your partnership is the most appropriate partnership for, for that specific research question, then it is better than a proposal that tries to answer a similar question but doesn't have that partnership. It's a very uh, generic answer to that question, but um, I don't think we're going to have scores for um, whether or not a partnership, an African partnership is included. It really needs to be appropriate. Uh, if <coughs> a partnership um, is required to answer that question, then it has to be there. So that's going to be the criteria, not whether or not you so don't force it, but if it is the appropriate uh, way of answering the question, then, then that's good. And um, as Stephen said, um, applications can, can come from anywhere in the world. It goes back to this research capacity issue. So the, the, the principal applicant or the, the organization applying as principal applicant um, organization needs to have the research capacity. That's the, the only criterion, really. Um, so be it from New Zealand or uh, uh, Nottingham. Um, on postdocs specifically, you had asked uh, whether there's going to be specific funding. I mean, maybe maybe Mary, you can um, talk to that, but I, I, we don't have specific postdoctoral um, 
programs as such. So that this is just um, sort of an element of, of your proposal, like other staffing. So it's not there's not going to be an, a postdoc specific um, element, but um, we're certainly not saying you can't include any postdocs on there. Does that answer your yeah. question in some ways? Yeah. Um, is it essential to have uh, UK collaborations? I guess we've answered that to some extent. No, it is not. It can be fully Chinese, African, or whatever it may be from New Zealand. Um, it's also not essential to have a government, the Chinese government side, uh, involved. It helps, it can help, um, also in terms of getting access to data sets. Um, for example, if you make contact with Mofcom, um, or if you, if you want um, to access uh, private firm data and all that. So th this can help. And again, if it's appropriate and you have managed to, to solicit that, then this helps your proposal. Um, Ian asked ask whether it's likely that there's going to be another call of that type. Um, it's too early to, to say that, in particular in light of the, in view of the spending review and all that, we don't know where we're going. Uh, just now after this, but um, so for now, for the next year or so, this is probably going to be the, the first one. This partnership was just on one call for proposals for now. But if this turns out to be great and we have um, money, then we might think about doing an, a follow-up, but perhaps also on with a slightly different country focus, perhaps looking at some other of the the emerging countries. But this is really, uh, yeah, too early to 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 say. Um, yeah, you asked Andrew. You asked about the about TSB um, or involvement of other research organisations. So, I mean, we ourselves can't facilitate that in in, uh, in any way. Unfortunately, TSB would probably have to work with us as a funding partner, um, and we haven't done that when we set up this partnership. So. Um, for a future partnership, that would be a good, good way of doing that. But um, I don't know if they are. I'm, I'm not too familiar with the TSB mechanism. So um, I, I'm not sure if they can add funding to that. But maybe on that, if um, you can solicit funding for proposals from elsewhere as well, that's also a good thing or can be a good thing. That certainly wouldn't uh, work against you in a proposal. I think um, that's all I can read. <laughs> Very good. Well, can I come back on one thing? Yeah, you got yeah. That's I mean, I think I think Dan made their point very well actually. But the, on the point about whether there's going to be another call, basically there is no specific plan for another call. The call is open for a very long time. It's open, you know, from was it open in October or November? November. No, uh, uh, it's still open till mid March, uh, and it's a two-stage process. So it only has to be a short proposal. Uh, um, so. One stage. Oh, oh it's one stage. Right. Very quick, so yeah. It's got to be a good proposal then. But there's still plenty of time to come up with it, and. Uh, 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 I think it's a good idea to try and get your proposal into this call. Uh, mm -hmm. I wouldn't, wouldn't, uh, there's no guarantee of a second call. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, yeah. uh, that leads us to the, the final message then, that is basically apply now. And, uh, and I must also say that the, uh, the, um, the, the timetable that you laid out is quite fast in, uh, in, uh, in, in ESRC terms, I think. Uh, Thank you. Uh, bearing in mind, of course, that ESRC yeah. is, the, is amongst or is maybe the world leading uh, uh, research funder. And uh, and has to has to screen all the proposals on the, on the research quality, which is of course very very important. And Diffit is of course the world's leading uh, donor <laughs> as well. Uh, that leads us to the uh, to the end. Thank you very much on um, uh, for, for for being with us for such a long uh, long time. First to to hear from the excellent panel on, uh, on, on, on that stimulated us to, to think through uh, a number of questions, as well as to uh, to think through the, the substance of the research call, which has been put together very nicely. Uh, and we now have more uh, more details, but uh, you've got email addresses uh, to, uh, to 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 fire your emails to, and, uh, uh, and and of course there will be uh, an immediate answer. Uh, I hope, Mary. Uh, um, <laughs> let me just thank uh, Stephen and uh, and Dan for uh, for such a, an excellent, stimulating presentation. And also, let's not uh, forget that without these individuals, we wouldn't sit here. So we wouldn't have these programs, and that's very important uh, to to bear in mind. Thank you, Dan and Stephen. Thank well, you. Thank you, Dan.